Hi folks, welcome to our final video on our question. In this section, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be translating using the current rate method, which assumes that the functional currency is the subsidiary's currency, which is the Russian ruble. And in this case, this means that the subsidiary is self-sustaining. When the subsidiary is self-sustaining, we use the current rate method. What are some of the rules behind this method? Well, unlike the temporal method, which we saw in the first video, all assets and liabilities are translated at the current or spot rate. That's the rate in effect at the date we're doing a translated balance sheet. Now, this is much simpler than what we saw in the first video for this question because we had to differentiate monetary from non-monetary items and translate those two types at different rates. Here we have no such differentiation. All the income statement items are translated at the average rate. This is, again, much simpler than it was under the temporal method where the sub and the parent were integrated. Why? Because, don't forget, income statement items would be translated at the historical rate, and if that rate wasn't known, the average rate. So you could still have multiple rates for income statement accounts. In this case, under the, the self because the sub is self-sustaining, we use the current rate method, we're only using one rate to translate all income statement items. And any exchange gain or loss is not in, go, does not go into net income. It's part of your other comprehensive income or, a, or OCI. And again, that OCI will be used to update AOCI or reserves on the balance sheet. And again, AOCI is in the equity section. So now, what does all that mean in terms of our rules? Well, we can see here that because all assets and liabilities are translated at the current or spot rate, which is the closing rate at the balance sheet date, that closing rate will be changing every time we do our final year's balance sheet, right? So the idea is it's a change in that net asset position or changes in our assets and liabilities that will give rise to exchange gains and losses. So. What we need to do now in order to calculate the foreign exchange gain or loss that goes into OCI this year is we need to look at the change in our net asset position, which is our assets less liabilities, because it's all the assets and liabilities that are translated at spot rates that are going to change every December 31st. So in this case, the easiest way to calculate the change in our net asset position is to look at how our equities changed. Because don't forget, it's assets less liabilities, which is net assets, that's equal to your shareholder's equity. So wouldn't it be easier for me to look at my net asset position at January the 1st and compare it to my actual net asset position at December 31st in order to calculate my exchange gain or loss? So that's what I'm going to do. Well, if I look at my net asset position, I can see in the equity section for my sub, they have common shares and an opening balance of retained earnings of 1.32 million rubles. The rate in effect at January 1st, year 11, again, all my assets and liabilities translated at the spot rate, 28. That means if I take the rubles and divide by 28, and again, I'm dividing because I have an indirect quotation in my question, I have $47,143. I can add to that my net income and why am I doing that? Because my equity position, also known as the net asset position, will change throughout the year because I've earned income. So that will change it from the beginning to the end of the year, as well as anything I declare in dividends. Notice I didn't have to take into, into account any change in my common shares because there were no new shares issued by the subsidiary company in year 11. In fact, in our course, we make the assumption that there were no new shares issued at all. So we don't have to worry about that complication. So now we have our income of 630 translated again at the average rate, which is 2809, to give us 22,428. We're going to add that to the opening balance of retained earnings. And again, dividends declared will also change your ending uh, shareholders' equity position. We deduct 450000 in dividends declared and divide it by the, date, the rate in effect at the date those dividends were declared, which is 2820. And that's going to give us um, a reduction in our net asset position of 15957 
so we can see our calculated position which is the position just as we said in the first video the position whereby if the parent had done all the work themselves in the foreign in the foreign country what would they have come up with as a net asset position they would have had 1.5 million which is the opening plus income less dividends of 1.5 million and they would have translated all these amounts to be 53,614 as a net asset position. However, we didn't do that work ourselves in the foreign country. We had our subsidiary do it. So their actual net asset position is compared to the calculated one. The actual net asset position can be determined at December 31st, year 11, from the balance sheet of the subsidiary company. And these are the assets of the company total. And we're deducting here, because we're looking at net assets, all of the liabilities that we see on the foreign company's balance sheet. And if we do that math, we will get 1.5 million as well. We're going to translate at the, that at the current or spot rate, also known as the closing rate, to come up with 53,192 as our net asset position. Well, guess what? That is a net asset position, which is less than what we would have had as net assets translated had we done all the work ourselves. But because we had the sub do it for us, we have a lesser net asset position, which means we have an exchange loss going into OCI. So now, with that in mind, before we look at where that's going, what we're going to do with it, we want to make sure that we can calculate our ending balance of retained earnings. Simple enough. We know that our opening balance of retained earnings at January 1, year 11, for the subsidiary company was 470000 I divide that by the REIT in effect at that date, which was 28, and I'm going to get 16786 as translated opening retained earnings. I'm adding my net income, which I know, actually, I think this is a typo here. This should be 09. My net income now is 630000 which I get from the sub-statements, translated at the average rate. I'm going to get 22428 which is exactly what I had up here. I deduct dividends to get my ending balance of retained earnings of 650000 which by the way, I know that from the subsidiary statements, that's what I should have in ending retained earnings. But translated, because dividends are translated at the closing or spot rate at the balance sheet date, because that's the date they're declared, I'm going to get 15957 deducted from my net income plus opening retained earnings, and that's going to give me 23257 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to translate my or, or to put on my translated balance sheet.